Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and distinguished members of the media and the press. Welcome to final Sunday of the TED VMP Prairie Law WTA Championships, Istanbul 2012. <laughs> I finally memorized it perfectly. I'd like to welcome all of you, a big giant welcome and a hug to all of you. Welcome to Istanbul. A couple of things before I introduce this very special lady to you. When she is finished talking, we will take questions and answers from all of you. And so now it is my distinct pleasure to introduce someone to speak about the incredible accomplishments and merits and milestones of the last year on the WTA. So please welcome Chairman and CEO of the WTA, Stacey Allister. Welcome to everyone, particularly welcome to our friends who have signed on to do my hands. Uh, this is the year-end review. Uh, for many of us, we, uh, we're all waiting, all the staff, you know, it's not just the players who are anxious for the season to be over. And it is a time of reflection. As I said Sunday night, 2012 will be remembered for epic matches, inspirational comebacks, and historic moments. If we want to look anywhere for inspiration, I think we can look at the church fans. They have been incredible. They launched this championship with great enthusiasm, and they haven't let us down in 2012. They love the performances of our athletes, and our athletes have loved them. I don't know about you, but it has been quite fun to listen to the athletes' post-match speeches, where they actually have thanked them. They thank them for their posters, and they didn't go as far to go over and give them hugs. I don't remember which tournaments that actually happened. So it has been a special week here at the Ted BP Paragraph WHA Championships. We have had tremendous off-court support for these championships. We start with the Ministry of Support and the Minister of Swakilich and the great leadership of the Turkish Tennis Federation a great woman who just joined us. I know the like president. Yeah, let's see what the president thought. I was in the end, we'll do something special for you, but uh, it has been uh, two great years, two great championships under your leadership, and we're most grateful. And of course, our partners at Ted B and P. Uh, they came on this journey with us in 2011. And I know they continue to be incredibly excited about tennis. They're now supporting the Turkish Tennis Federation. And that's ultimately what we want to be able to do, is build tennis in Turkey. The championships are the engine, excitement. And when we move on, it will be great to know that this legacy and the sport development program that the TTF aspires to be, uh, we all have great partners with them. So. Ten players. Ten flags, never in our history, and we ended the year end with ten different nations being represented. I have been talking about the WGA being a truly global platform. Nothing tells the story more than these ten flags being represented. And as well, we had eight flags, eight nations. Here are the championships, first in our history. As I look back, I watched a lot of tennis in 2012, along with many of you that are in the room. Some of those historic moments have to be in Victoria Azarenka, starting the year, earning the number one ranking, and ending the year with the number one ranking. Capturing her first Grand Slam, and I'm sure we will see her earn many more slams, and five titles on the WTA. Terrific year, and she's certainly setting the stage for a very strong career on the WTA. I don't know what gets better than this photo. You know, here you have this uh, incredible champion. She gets injured. She comes back from that injury. She retools herself. She captures a career grand slam. She wins that slam that she had coveted and wanted. And uh, I think we have seen it here on court. How excited she is to play in tennis and winning tennis. And that was a special moment that day on the red flag. In this picture, the color of the comeback kid, 
you know, she has to fight all of the odds against very serious health issues and has come back in epic performance. When we watched her Wimbledon, her Olympic gold medal, her US Open performance, <coughs> her performances here at the Tabby very long for the team championships. I think John would find tweeted in the advance of my uh, press conference today, he said, what Stacy wants to say is there was to retire. John's right. <laughs> he is a gift to us in those times. I'd be remiss if we didn't also say a few things about some other uh, future stars. You know, we've had this mix of the established and the rising stars. And what a great performance all year. And guess what that wants to, uh, has had for women's tennis. Sarah Arlani, what can you say? Twelve titles between singles and doubles and a year-end number one. Um, and she just left her heart on the court for us, earning a year in ranking of seven. And Angelina Kerber, I can remember a year ago being at the US Open, she's in the semifinals, and everyone's asking me, who's Angelina Kerber? Hey, and she arrived. She's the first player, German player since 1999 to be ranked in the top five in second draft of time. So she is definitely driving the engine for German tennis. And we had some fun on the international uh, tournament level in the fall where young Laura Robson uh, had great performances and Heather Watson actually broke through and won a WTA career title. So we're looking forward to also the youth of the WTA led by Heather and Laura and so many other talented young players. Well, it was a sad day in New York. There were tears. Yes, the CEO did cry. This athlete has made me cry several times through the world. <coughs> During her time on the WTA, just what a special person. So we didn't say goodbye to Kim, we did wish her good luck. I don't think she's going to go very far from the sport. She does love it. So I think uh, last week she was in Luxembourg actually coaching on um, Bellevue Fire. So we wish her and Brian and Jada all the best. And uh, she is part of this great WTA family and we'll see more of Kim in a different way. Yeah. 2012, I don't think in my career, aside perhaps from people prize money, um, the reunion of the original nine was one of the most historic and inspirational moments for me. It is only the second time that these women have actually gotten together. Uh, so it was a special, and I can tell you, they are as charming, as fiery, and as competitive today as they were in the 1970s. So we had fun recreating that photo. I'll talk about back and forth so you can see them there. <clears throat> and we wanted to capture it almost 40 years later. They were the brave souls that stood up to the establishment and said that it could be a commercially successful women's only tour. They signed a $1 check. And today, in 2012, our athletes are playing for $100 million in prize money in the Grand Slams and the WTA. How far we have come in just 40 years. This not only is historic and a milestone for women's tennis, women's sport, it also is our proof point that the circuit structure for reform that we embarked upon in 2009 is working. We went through that hard work of shortening the season, streamlining the calendar, of providing more breaks in the calendar. And the top players are delivering. They're going to our top events and playing more. And as a result of that, tournament revenues are increasing. And when tournament revenues increase, players are earning more prize money and so forth. 2012 was a great business year for us as well. We renewed our partnership with Oracle for two years. And we also renewed our long-standing partner, Dubai Duty Free, who are here. We saw that new dimension of our partnership. Dubai Duty Free is now the presenting sponsor of our year end awards. I mean, thanks a lot uh, for all of your support. 2012 will also be the ending of a few key partnerships that we have had for a long time. The first being Regency Eurosport. I first want to thank Arnon Milchon of Regency. He had the vision and the inspiration that women's tennis deserved more exposure on television. It was in the late 90s, he had bought this company called Puma. 
and they sponsored a young lady that I thought was going to be a massive star. Arnold was right, it was Serena Williams. And he wanted to provide a platform for Serena and the stars of today more exposure. So he used his influence in the industry and he brokered a deal for us with Eurosport. 14 years of great support. I want to thank Laurent, Eric Lillet at Eurosport, Geraldine Fineo, she really has been the internal champion of women's tennis for so many years at Eurosport, and all of the production people at Eurosport who have promoted our athletes and shared with the world of women's tennis. <clears throat> Eight amazing, fantastic years when we started with Sonny Erickson and now Sonny Mobile. <coughs> if Billy was here, she would say, Sonny Erickson epitomized the best sponsor in the world. Not only did they give us financial support, they gave us the heartbeat, and they gave us the energy to dream big and go big. They got it. They wanted a strong WTA brand, and they pushed us. They energized us, took us beyond our comfort level, lots of innovations, and cut through promotions for women's tennis. A few of my key memories, we played tennis in the dark. Night tennis was a lot of fun. That was really, really cool. I think that was one of our best. We played tennis in the middle of uh, Sevilla in that uh, when Real Madrid was playing. Played tennis in the desert sands of Qatar. Played tennis on top of London. Near the London Eye. <coughs> we even played tennis in South Beach on the top of cars. And we all know Serena walks on water. She can play tennis on water. Yeah, she can play tennis on water. And they helped us to promote the younger stars. And they took us into the digital age with the Experian Hot Top program, which was great last year. And when we said, mm, we sold you 26 premier tier, uh, tier 1 or Tier 2 tournaments, but we have to make major reform. We have to cut it. They said, we're with you because we want strong WTA. They were in lockstep with the circuit structure reform and were a major partner mm, in helping us through it. And they helped us open the first WTA office in Beijing. And probably our proudest moment with Sonny Erickson was the achievement of equal prize money. And they were arm in arm in this fight. And the gentleman in this photo, Miles Flint, president of Sonny Erickson at the time where he signed <coughs> the largest sponsorship in the history of tennis, in the history of women's tennis. So Miles, I'd like you to stand and please We'll all give you a round of applause for your vision and all of your support for women's tennis. Thank you. <laughs> and so they took us to the top of the world. We are at the top of our game. They made us believe, and they have left women's tennis in a great spot. We are incredibly grateful for their historic contribution to the WTA. But it's a new day, it's a new road, and it's a new horizon, and the future is bright. We're incredibly excited about our new four-year partnership with Perform. Perform is going to dial it up and do what Arnold Milchon wanted. More exposure for women's tennis through multiple platforms. <coughs> Many of our career tournaments have two courts covered. That will mean a 45% increase in the number of live matches. Right now, today, when we have all these great stars, we only have one court. 
to share on the world feed. <clears throat> most, most of our career journalists went to. That means the lean off is playing and Angelica Kerber. We can now deliver to fans in China. We can deliver to fans in uh, Germany uh, more matches. <clears throat> the form will launch a new web and a new mobile site by year end. Our news feed will now be produced in seven different languages. And it will be done on a regular basis throughout the day, and including the daily wrap-up. We're going to produce a magazine, magazine show for the WTA, 26 episodes, which will provide great content and all that off-court personality that we know uh, our athletes possess. <clears throat> TennisTV.com obviously have more matches available to fans because more matches will be produced. And they'll be very aggressive at pumping out the news through video on demand. So overall, this is going to be a real win for the WTA at a time when we're looking for more digital distribution and more exposure overall for this tennis. It is not a secret. I told you last year, it continues to be one of our key strategic objectives: the growth of the sport in Asia Pacific and in China as a foundation. We have the China Open, we have Guangzhou, and in 2013 we will add a new international tournament in Shenzhen. And I'm hoping with good cooperation with the CTA that we will add one, maybe two, WTA 125s onto the calendar in 2013. And now, this jewel that we have, the WTA Championships. Where will it find its home? in 2014. And I think maybe before I talk about where we might stay as the championships in 2014, maybe have a quick look at where we have been. Yeah, a bit. I <laughs>
used in the bed process. Where we launched this sort of 12 month uh, in the process. And we are now at the moment where we are going to announce the candidate cities for the 2014 WTA Championships. So I'll start from the west and go east. Mexico City. Kazan, Russia. Tianjin, China. And Singapore. I couldn't be more excited <laughs> to have those four cities bidding for the WTA Championships. Four amazing cities, uh, robust economies, growth markets, and very much part of our international growth strategy. So we'll now embark upon the process of working with these candidate cities, with our agency, TSC, because we can this here, it's an amazing job on the Florence Hackathon, our senior vice president in managing this process. We will meet with them, we'll do the site visits, we'll continue to talk, and by the spring of 2013, Lisa and Vanessa here will make the decision of the board. <laughs> We'll bring forward to the board uh, our recommendation on where the championships should be held for 2014 and beyond. 2013, 40 love. We are 40 years old in 2013, so save the date. There will be celebrations throughout the year, but we will, as a tennis family, gather during the middle Sunday Monday and celebrate 40 amazing years of tennis. And so, although we have the Qatar tournament, the Qatar Airways tournament champions next week in Sofia, Bulgaria, we have our first 125 in Taipei. The sun will set tonight here in Istanbul. We will crown a new Sultana of the TEP in Verified WTA Championships. And these eight players will take a long deserved break. They have inspired us in 2012. They have taken women's tennis to a new level. This tennis has been incredible. And what you've seen this week, you've seen it. It's just, they keep dialing it up. And I think they're setting the stage for a very interesting and competitive 2015. Thank you very much.